Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Lion Film. This week we're doing something a little bit different. It would be fair to say that we're currently in a golden age for superhero movies. Because thanks to Marvel and the Avengers, all our current cape vigilantes are expected to do well both critically and financially. So this week, we're going to take a look at a couple of pretty interesting superhero flicks from yesteryear. I'm not promising that these are all good movies, because not all of them are. Just that they're interesting and worth a watch if you're into the superhero mythos and would like to expose yourself to some of the more off-kilter and underrated offerings from the genre. There is only one who punishes them all. Number 1. Punisher Warzone Who's the Punisher, you might ask? Think Batman, but with no silly moral scruples against killing or using guns. Punisher Warzone follows Frank Castle, ex-special forces badass turned vigilante, as he confronts his version of the Joker named Jigsaw. This movie is pure action porn. It's what would happen if you took all the complex plots and character development out of Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and up the violence to 11. A definite must-watch if you like blood and gore. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> For this moment, the city's in peril, Lucille. <gasps> All of their lives. Number two, Mystery Men. Simply put, this is the superhero version of the other guys. Mystery Men is a screwball comedy about the worst superheroes in the world teaming up to save the day after accidentally killing the city's most successful hero. This movie has one of my favorite Ben Stiller performances. Perfectly casted as Mr. Furious, and Geoffrey Rush as the villain Casanova Frankenstein is always a good bet. The humor is really quick and smart, with the personalities and abilities of the mystery men themselves providing a lot of humor. State your name and power. PMS Avenger. I only work four days a month. Is there a problem with that? No. No. Catch it if you, like me, prefer to root for the underdog. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Number 3, The Shadow the granddaddy of all anti-heroes in movies. The Shadow started as a serialized radio show back in the 1930s based on pop novels of the same name. This 1994 adaptation with Alec Baldwin is a real must-watch if you enjoy mysterious mass vigilantes. Say nothing of the parts of Batman's character that were lifted whole meal from The Shadow. For example, the billionaire playboy alter ego, the usage of theatricality and fear, the Far Eastern martial arts training. Baldwin is both charming and intimidating as the titular character. Watch it for the art design and atmosphere alone. This movie epitomizes the sleek, opulent days of America in the 20s and 30s like no other I've ever seen. Number 4, Darkman. Most people might credit Taken as Liam Neeson's first stab at becoming an action star, but only if you discount this little gem. Darkman follows Peyton Wesley, a scientist who develops super strength and loses all his pain receptors after the villain of the movie attempts to burn him to death. Peyton, who was also developing a formula for artificial skin, coincidentally, as Darkman schemes to enact revenge using his newfound strength and artificial skin disguises. Did you know that this was Sam Raimi's breakout movie? Unable to secure the rights to either Shadow or the Batman, Raimi decides to create his own superhero and struck a deal with Universal Studio to make his first Hollywood movie. This is a dark, quiet movie and Liam Neeson brings an angry, vengeful presence to the main character. A must watch if you enjoy morally complex superheroes. Charlie! It's not a game! Andrew! Stop this right now! Number 5, Chronicle. This movie is a personal favourite of mine. Chronicle is a low-budget, found-footage action drama about a high school social outcast and his jock friends who suddenly gain powerful telekinetic abilities. The main character, Steve, initially revels in his newfound popularity and sense of control over his own life, but that quickly devolves as his sharp intellect and teen angst combined with godlike powers leads to a psychotic break and an epic, tragic third act. This movie is an amazing deconstruction of the superhero origin story, playing it very, very realistically as our heroes go from playfully messing around to having to deal with the reality of being an emotionally immature teenager thrust into a situation way too large for them to handle. The filmmakers even found a smart way to justify the found footage format by having Steve control and hover the camera around them with his abilities. Also meaning that you won't get nausea from the shaky cam bullshit. The lion does not feel guilty when it kills a gazelle, right? You do not feel guilty when you squash a fly. And I think that means something. 
All right, thank you guys for joining us for this very special episode of Lion Film. If you like what we've done so far, let us know. And uh, stay tuned for the next one of these, where we talk about monster movies you might not have seen.